when people think of a garbage patch, they think of something that you could go and jump on and walk across. It is really like a big, toxic soup. These things are huge. If you're talking to somebody um, on the street, they would think of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. If you're talking to ocean scientists, they might refer to it as the um, a North Pacific Gyre. The fire gyres in the ocean are effectively these like mega whirlpool-like currents. There's two gyres in the Pacific, two gyres in the Atlantic, and one in the Indian Ocean. The spinning motion collects and picks up plastic. It goes next to one coast, around to another, around to another coast, and then traps it in these gyres. One of the things that people don't appreciate is the vast size of these gyres. Sometimes you could have this mass of plastic soup that is the size of Texas. Some folks say the size of a couple Texases. You could sail across one of these features for days. There is a major misconception that this is a big island that you could drive a boat to, kind of like Waterworld style, jump out on and go for a jog across. That's not the case. It is really like a big toxic soup. You see an increase in the concentration of big plastics, but there's um, an even higher concentration of small plastics that are constantly broken down to smaller and smaller pieces. Scientists call these microplastics, which is a sponge for toxins from the oceans that a sea turtle or a seabird might eat and is so challenging to clean up is, is a lot scarier to me, honestly, than some big mass, uh, massive trash islands. We eat a lot of these species. So when you have seafood, you're buying fish that themselves have ingested some of these plastics and some of these toxins. So there's a lot of uncertain consequences that uh, are being studied actively right now. Does that mean there are less food or less fish because we are losing fish and other wildlife from um, these sections of the oceans? Does that mean that some of these toxins are coming back to our own plates or plates of seafood we're put in front of our kids? There are islands that dot um, these oceans, for example, in the Pacific, and they are the unhappy recipients as these gyres are spinning and carrying with them all this plastic. So a lot of Pacific island communities and a lot of uninhabited islands, which are home for some pretty amazing ocean wildlife, are becoming a bit like garbage bins because of all this plastic that washes up on their shores. The North Pacific gyre happens to move around some very populated areas, big cities on the west coast of the United States, big cities um, on the eastern coast of the Asia Pacific communities. It becomes this big international cosmopolitan trash accumulation. Um, and interestingly, it's this international character of these gyres that makes them really hard to be really hard to clean up. The good news is because we're connected to it, we get to do something about it with our decisions in terms of how we say yes and hopefully no to single use throwaway plastic pollution. So that is you, that is me, that is part of that problem. So it's scary, but it's also exciting because that means we can do something about it.